In this video lesson, I'd like to go through the process of a pocketing operation. I'd like to go ahead and clear this entire yellow area out. And to get the best finish, it's actually going to take multiple operations together to try to give me the best results. Let's go ahead and go over to the Cam tab and put it into Tool Isometric. I'm now going to go ahead and go to Setup. I'm going to shift my Work Coordinate System to my front top left corner. And for my stock this time, I'm going to go ahead and say no additional stock. We'll go ahead and imagine that it's already been faced for this demo anyways. And I'll go ahead and say OK. So I've already assigned where my origin is, and I've gone ahead and shrink wrapped the stock straight to my part. Great. We're going to be using all three of these, the 2D Adaptive, the 2D Pocket, and the 2D Contour. The 2D Adaptive tool is going to be used to clear out the majority of the area. So it's going to go in there and dig out the majority of the pocket. But 2D Adaptive is not what we necessarily consider to be a finishing operation. It doesn't leave us great results on the floor, nor the walls. So we're going to use the 2D Pocket to go ahead and give me nice, even step overs to clean up the bottom of the pocket. And then we'll use the Contour tool to go ahead and trace around the outside edge and clean up the walls. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to go ahead and open up the 2D Adaptive, and the first thing it wants to know, as most of the operations, is the tool I'm going to use. For this one from my library, I'm going to pick Tool 7, or my half inch flat. We'll go to the next tab, and it wants to know the pocket that we want it to machine. And for this one, I want to pick this bottom surface. Now, that actually did more than just define the boundaries of the pocket. It actually assigned the bottom height of that pocket, and you'll see that on the next tab. So for the pocket selection, I just want to pick that main bottom surface. And the same is going to be for each one of them. This top height and the bottom height are really the two that I want to focus on. So you can see right now that this is at stock top. And really what I want to do is I want to change that to model top. But since there was no facing operation, my model top and my stock top are in the exact same place right now, but not typically. So I would have a facing operation that would have started up higher, and then I'm going to go to my model top instead of starting at the stock top since it's already gone. The bottom height is selected contours. So just as I said on the last tab, by picking that bottom pocket, that is the selected contour that you have. Okay, so let's come to the next tab, our Passes tab, and there are a couple things that I'd like to take a look at here. The first one is the optimal load. The optimal load has to do with the tool engagement, so how much of the tool I actually want to be engaged to the material or cutting the material at one time. So I'm going to go ahead and decrease the optimal load from the current 40% to 20%. So I'm going to right click on it and edit the expression. I can see that I have a formula here, and I'm going to delete the 0.4 and make that 0.2. So I'm now only cutting 20% of the tool's diameter. That will allow me to go ahead and push the speed rate and the feed rate later on. Stock to leave, I am going to leave 20 thousandths on the walls and 20 thousandths on the floor. So axial is the floor, that's the bottom material, and that we're going to use the 2D pocket to remove. And the radial is the actual walls themselves, and we're going to leave 20 thousandths of an inch on there for the 2D contour to pick up. So if you're wondering what this 20 thousandths really looks like, one sheet of paper is 4 thousandths of an inch thick, so you're thinking about five sheets of paper. So I'm going to come in and clean up the bottom and clean up the wall with two different operations. So the only thing I really did on this tab was adjust the optimal load. For the last tab, or the linking tab, I do want to go ahead and change right now my lift height to 0.06. So that each time it needs to lift up and go over to another pass, it'll raise up about 60 thousandths of an inch before it goes ahead and comes back down again. If you are working with prototyping material, then we can change this 2 degree to about 6 degrees. So if I'm working with prototyping material, I can change this ramping angle so it goes down into the part just a little bit faster, rather than the 2 degrees, which is good for things like aluminum. And I'm going to go ahead and say OK. So if I highlight this 2D Adaptive, you can see that this is the helix that we just changed from 2 degrees to 6 degrees. So it's actually going to walk its way all the way into the part and all the way to the bottom. Well, I'm not quite sure if I can actually get all of that in one shot. A general rule of thumb is when I'm trying to use the 2D Adaptive, I can do a cut depth or depth of cut, either way, of about 200% of the tool's diameter. So if we look at the tool that we're using, we're actually using the half inch tool. And 200% of that is going to be a full inch. 
So I'm going to come to my inspect and measure, and I want to click on this wall. So I want to see how tall that wall is. So it's 0.75. So if I'm trying to decide if I can actually do this all in one pass, I can. Um, so 0.75 is not one inch or greater. So that half inch tool can do that. If not, I can come back into the 2D Adaptive. I can come over here to the Passes tab, go down to Multiple Depths, and then with this Maximum Roughing, I can control how much I want it to be able to cut in one single pass. That's good, and I'm going to go ahead and click on Setup. Go back to my cam tab and simulate. So it should do one nice smooth helix all the way to the bottom of the pocket at three quarters of an inch. And then it will start whittling its way into the corners with no more than 20% of the tool engaged with the material. And hopefully if you watch those processes, each time it came over and touched the wall, that's what I was talking about is it not being a finishing operation. It will leave me a lot of small marks on the wall every time it lifts up and comes over and touches the wall again. And kind of the same thing on the bottom surface is it's lifting up and touching back down on that surface so many times that it's really giving me a rough surface on the bottom and a rough surface on the walls. So before we close our simulation, this time I actually want to come over to Show Part Comparison. When I click on Show Part Comparison, everything that's blue right now is something that's different between what has been machined and what has actually been modeled. So if you look at it from the top, I have everything on the walls has been left over, everything on the floor has been left over, and I need to go clean those up. You can also see that I still have blue material in the corners. Well, unfortunately, that's left over from the radius of the tool. Round tools can't make square corners. So unfortunately, that's just one of the limitations of the operations that we're using right now. So we'll go ahead and turn off the part comparison. I'll leave the simulation, and we're going to go to our next operation. So we've gone ahead and hogged out all the material and got rid of it as good as we can. We've left 20 thousandths on the wall and 20 thousandths on the floor. We're going to use this 2D pocket to just clean up the floor. So I'll click on 2D Pocket. I don't need to pick a tool this time because I already have a tool picked. I'll go ahead and come to my Geometries tab and I'm going to pick the exact same pocket. So again, not only did that define the boundaries, but it also went ahead and set up my bottom height for me. We'll come to the Passes tab and the maximum step over this time, we're going to change to 50%. So I'm going to right click in, edit the expression, and I'll change that 0.95 to just 0.5 and I'll select OK. Multiple depths I don't need because there's only 20 thousandths of an inch left over and this tool can get 20 thousandths of an inch in one pass, especially at a 50% step over. Stock to leave, I do want to leave stock on the walls but I don't want to leave any stock on the floor. That's the whole idea, that's what this one is finishing. So I'll go ahead and erase that and put 0 and select OK. So the problem right now you can see is that I still have a helix going all the way from the top down to the bottom. And that material is already gone. The 2D Adaptive already cleared all that material out. Okay, so I'm going to come back into my 2D Pocket, and it's all about this Heights tab. The stock top is not actually where I want this operation to measure from. So I'm going to change that to Selection. Now I can come in here and pick it and it will actually raise up a little bit. It's not going to start it right on this face, but you'll be able to see a small helix now right off the material. So there is still a small helix as it goes around and then it cuts into that 20 thousandths of an inch. And then it's the same thing. So I can go ahead and adjust that 2 degree to something more like 6 degrees. Okay, great. So I've got a 2D Adaptive that's going to clear out the majority of it. I've got a 2D Pocket that's going to clean up the floor, and it should still leave me 20 thousandths on the wall. So let's try it again. I'll go to Setup. We'll go to Simulate. I've got my comparison turned off, but my stock is turned on, and we'll go ahead and play it. We'll go ahead and click on Show Part Comparison, and we should still have blue all the way around the walls. Okay, great. We're going to go to our last operation, which is the 2D Contour. The 2D Contour is just going to trace whatever path we pick and go ahead and clean up the walls for me. And it's the same thing. Because my walls only have 20 thousandths of an inch left over, I'm going to be able to do this in one pass. So I'm going to take the tool that I've got, 
I'm going to go ahead and go to the geometry tab and pick that loop. It's going ahead and assign the bottom height and the profile that I want it to trace. There's nothing I want to do on the passes tab for this operation, and there's nothing that I want to do on the linking. So I'll go ahead and say OK, and we'll try the whole thing. And there we go. We'll go ahead and click on our show part comparison. I'm going to have blue in the corner. The only way I could limit the amount of blue that's in the corner is to do it with a smaller tool. And we'll get into how to do something like that later. But that's the entire process of trying to clean up a single pocket. I'm going to use the 2D Adaptive with a 20% step over or optimal load. I'm going to go ahead and clean up all the material up to 200% of the tool's diameter. I'm then going to use the 2D Pocket to do nice even steps to clean up the floor and then 2D Contour to clean up the walls. That's everything you need for a single pocket.